Wow, that was weird. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only. I am. Ouch. Everything hurts. Hobo Tom. Everything hurts. Because I've been going back to the gym for two days. My gym opened up. Because I have to lose weight. I saw what that scale said, and, and the scale is not my friend right now. But I think that's very common through this whole quarantine time. We were just, well, I was probably drinking and eating too much. And this week's not helping because I'm finishing up all my leftovers from Saturday night. So actually, I did that. I did that. Well, I'm doing that. Got that done, so that gets... And tomorrow I just have a oh, work. Hobo gym. Friday's gonna suck. And hopefully tomorrow I get my other work schedule. I always like to know, but I don't know. I just get nervous. I think you're gonna fire me. Especially when I get my work schedule. I'm not here to talk about my employment issues. I already have one job. I have another at home job lined up. And I still have, well, if they ever come back to the racetrack, I guess. Because, yeah, also my at home job. That's a good thing. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some AEW. And wow, was it weird. And there's going to be some breaking news in this, too. Uh, so let's see here. Also, but first, as always, I got to thank a whole bunch of people. Jen! Jen, you just you just barely got back in before the 10 count because you only got to a count of six. And thank you for all your support, Jen. Again, if you'd like to be like Jen and the others on this list, the hobo list, um, you can always like, share, comment, subscribe, or join me on Discord over at, at Woo, whatever, Woo Alt right now. YouTube's still not up. 
and that's that's getting on my nerves because now I have to watch um, Impact over on Twitch, and I'm always contemplating about going to Twitch, but I don't feel like I just don't, I'm just too lazy right now. Maybe one day, maybe you guys can put can lead me in the right direction. Should I stay on YouTube or go to Twitch? YouTube's something I know, and I have a whole notebook full of stuff. Twitch is different. But if enough people leave YouTube, I'll still be here. I'll get more views. I don't know, it's a whole conundrum. But never mind that. Let's talk about some other people I was interacting with. I believe we were chatting a lot, um, dealing with uh, female wrestlers, I think, because like the one match they had was, was really weird. That and the like, there were a couple other weird matches. This was a this was a weird show, but I'll get to that. Oh, I have to find the blue girl. That's what I was trying to do. Shoot, I'll do that. I don't know, maybe it's, this is uploading itself. But let's see here. Um, so after that, let's see here. We have Don Willow. You saw a master of the air guitar. Sean Striff, you're just dancing around there with your briefcase boombox. Let's see here. Auto Theist. Oh, I think I actually got that right. 911. You, sir, can crawl out of here. Oh, I know what the talk was about. I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. Dave Tron 99. You, sir, are that heel that wins by dirty pin. Let's see here. Levon 3X, you are a member of the El Generico Band. And finally, I doubt this is the real one, but I don't care. Eva Marie sent me a message. Holy shit.
My status is moving up in the world. If that was the real verified Eva Marie. I doubt it. But that's okay. Yeah, I think we were talking about who was better female ref. Ref Jen in WWE or Aubrey. And someone showed some amazing pics of Aubrey in, in, in ref panties. Because he said they were short shorts. They were called panties. And then there was a the talk about Shotsky Blackheart. She's selling pictures of that online to make money. That's weird. But Filipinos are... They do weird stuff. But... Next, I think, what was that old discussion I had? I think someone asked me, I don't even remember how it came up. Someone asked me if I would ever really go to a cockfight. And I think my response was, I'm 95% sure I would never do that. And they're not, well, why not 100%? I know they have those in the Philippines. I always give myself a two per shot, two percent botch chance with any woman. That's that could be Joan Jett, Madonna, the Kardashians, all of them, um, Britney Spears, Eva Marie. Yes, any woman I give myself a two percent chance with. I figure five percent, some rich. Filipino banker's daughter invites me to the Philippines and it's one of their things. I could do that for that. And and she's also a, a lingerie model too. So yeah, there's a, there's a whole bunch of qualifiers. But never say... Not, the old phrase is never say never. Enough about that though. That was pretty weird. Let's talk about some something else that was weird. AEW. I almost don't know where to start. Because this was a weird show. Um, and who are those luchadors in the crowd? That was weird. I have my luchador mask. I could be El, El Vagabundo Hobo Dos. And I could go ringside at AEW. Indeed. But that's okay. I don't want to. I don't know. Actually, actually, now that I think about it, that might be a pretty cool idea. Yep, my name is Hobo Tom. I wear my mask. I, I look like a hobo. That could work. And I would get free ringside seats. Granted, I'd have to t take a bump or two. They're like, yeah, can you take a back pump? Yes, I can. Um, let's see here. So, again, so, so it was an interesting crowd. They're, they're filling up more. The I think my big question is they say Fighter Fest is coming this summer. I wonder if it's going to be in Daytona Beach. I'm trying to think. I don't think they sold out when they came last year. So I want to say there were still seats available where I was sitting. The 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 the, the floor in the front bowl always fill up. So, so that's that's a, that's a that's a given. Where I was in the hobo section, like feet from the back, I actually think it was. I'm trying to remember now. I have to watch some of my old videos, and you too can also watch some of my videos. I think I think there were like seats open though. They didn't sell out. <laughs> I know the whole area behind the hard cam was like empty. I mean, they could fill those seats in easily. So, so yeah, I don't know. The whole Daytona Beach crowd is a weird crowd. Because I don't think a lot of people that went to AEW actually lived in Daytona Beach. I think a lot of people drove in from like the greater Orlando, Tampa area. Some from Jacksonville. I don't know. Daytona Beach is a weird wrestling town 
Like, even when the matches are good, if they don't know who you are, they'll just, like, boo you and leave. They, they won't care. I think I was talking with uh, my friend, Corey, when he came over. It's like, yeah, the wrestling matches are actually pretty good. No one knew who they were, but I could tell who, very simply, I could tell who the heel was. I could tell who the face was. I knew who to boo. I knew who to cheer for. I, I knew when it was a face versus face match, and you cheered for both. Um, I'm trying to think. What else about stood out? Bunch of no names, but but the wrestling itself was good. No one knew who they were, and people like left. And I'm like, that's terrible. Because it's one thing if the wrestling's bad, because sometimes it can be comically bad. It's one thing if you have two no names putting on like a five star match. That's a whole other issue. The only thing I don't like is just boring matches. If it's if it's boring, it's like. Cell phone time. Beep, 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 beep. Um, but enough about that. So, again, I'm curious to know when Fighter Fest, because they just say during the summer. They don't say where. Um, they've come to Daytona Beach to, I think, Cody and Kenny's. I know Kenny's been here twice. Cody. I forget if he, yeah, he was here last year. So, again, it's that weird thing. I don't know. Let's get to AEW right now. So it's Private Party and Joey Janelle taking on the Young Bucks, the Bucks of Youth. And like the very first Matt Hardy. Because he came, he like, he busted out his old tights from like his very first show. Because I want to say Jeff was the first one who actually got into WWE. I think the Hardy Boys, I might be confusing them with, I know, I think the Hardy Boys. Actually, did the job for the Rockers when it was like legit Shawn Michaels and Mario Gennetti was the star. That was the late 80s, still in the mid to late 80s, I think, when the Rockers were, were still kind of like the Rockers. So, I think they actually did the job, yeah, because that was Matt and Jeff Hardy, I think. I think they went by their names, too. So, but then we have the Young Bucks taking on Matt and Matt Hardy. Again, taking on Private Party and Joey Janelle. This was weird because Young Bucks started, they just double team. They just go, go right to work, tend them, tend them work early and often. Um, Isaiah, he, got, he tagged out to Joey Janelle. Joey Janelle actually got, got his comeback. Joey Janelle got the hot tag. Wow, it'll be interesting to hear what one Mr. Jim Cornette says about a, a Joey Janela hot tag. Especially really early in the match. And then Private Party started to uh, do their double teamwork. It's pretty. Then Joey, Joey Janela just dives all over the place. And he curses too. And he gives no Fs about just cursing. Even if it's on TNT. And I don't know. There are rumors. Pure mindless rumors. That not only will AEW be on TNT. But they'll be on a new channel of HBO. HBO, because they were advertising it. HBO something. I forget. I don't know. But it's like, because I know like there's HBO East, HBO West, HBO 2, and a whole bunch of others like nowadays. I didn't even know there was. I thought, I just remember one HBO like back in the day. But it's like another HBO on demand channel. Who knows? So I wonder if Dynamite's going to be on both channels or if they're going to have Dark on the HBO channel. Uh, that'd be different. Uh, so Private Party, again, they get their double team moves in. Um, then the Blade, um, they go out, out to the outside and... The one person from Private Party is sitting right in front of the Blade, who's there in the Force of Heal section. And he eats a super kick. That causes the Busher to pull the Young Bucks into the audience section and beat them up. How this is not a DQ, and if they're just in the audience, why are the police not there to escort them out of the building? If I did that, first of all, I would get the crap kicked out of me. By the wrestlers. 
<laughs> Ref Aubrey then would kick the crap out of me. And then the cops would tase me. And then there's Bubba in the prison cell. You don't want to be with Bubba in the prison cell. No, no, no. That's, that's very bad. So then started a whole fight there. I'm back in the ring. Um, Mark Quinn, I think. And Matt Hardy were going at it. Uh, Matt Hardy hit the, hit the side effect. It was old school. It was a weird match. Uh, Hardy tries to pin all three of them. One time, Joey goes, bombs away! That was fun. I'll give Joey Janela this. He at least can talk. He, he can do his trash talking. He does his shouting in the ring. Again, in an empty arena, even with a very limited audience, it adds some, some ambiance to it. It adds a little bit of atmosphere. So I don't mind it that much. Um, let's see here. And there was a, a springboard something move. By private, I think private party. Then Matt Hardy, then Matt Hardy delivered an elbow. Then it was the more bang for your buck, and that got the pin. But more importantly, when they started to do all that diving and flippy stuff, Mark Quinn, he got his knee effed up. Because even Matt Hardy was like, oh. And they could probably hear it, because I know when I broke my wrist. I literally heard that that ever sickening snap sound. Whenever you hear that snap sound, you know it's bad. I think when I destroyed, when I wrecked my knee, I didn't hear a snap sound. It just went, I just felt it go through, like, I just felt the femur go through the kneecap and I never screwed up something. So this was, a, it was a weird match, though. It wasn't botchy, it just seemed off a little bit. I don't know how else to describe it. It's still a good match, except, except for that ending. Again, when you see someone that, that gets a legit knee injury, because he came off, he did the little flippy stuff, and it looks like he literally like, tweaked his knee the wrong way. I hope it's just a tweak, or at worst, I mean, if it was an MCL, it's, it's bad, but not terrible. If it's an LCL, it's kind of the same deal. As long as, it's, as long as it's not an ACL or PCL. If it's one of the ACLs or PCLs, he's fucked, as the Scottish would say. Um, so this was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. And then the Butcher and Blade, they jump the Young Bucks, and then the FTR comes in. They just beat up the Butcher and Blade, and they stare down the Young Bucks. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, we saw the Shatter Machine. So good. And wait, you know, with a Butcher and Blade, where was the bunny at? Could the bunny be returning to Impact? Rosemary's talked to a stuffed bunny, but Rosemary is not necessarily all there. So then we had uh, the John Moxie promo. Uh, Brian Cage came out for for his for, for his showing against against Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson is the jobber to everyone. His job is to get taught literally, and I'll t I'll tell you what happens. He gets tossed around. He got he ate a combo power bomb, buckle bomb, then the drill claw. Brian Cage wins in convincing fashion. It was a ham sandwich of a match. And then, um, of course, Taz is his great line. Beat Cage if you can. Survive if he lets you. Taz. -da 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 -da. Oh, Taz in the orange and black. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. That was pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see Taz put over Brian Cage. Again, Brian Cage looks smaller, but he's still jacked as anything. And then Britt Baker did not have PowerPoint, and she had a conspiracy board. 
and I've had it with Britt Baker. The thing with Britt Baker, she actually did tear her LCL, lateral collateral ligament. Uh, that's the, on the opposite. It's the opposite one that I tore because I tore my medial collateral, she, which is on the inner part thigh. Lateral collaterals on the outer part. And again, I think people were saying it's uh, six to eight weeks. I've heard it's, it's, about, it's about two to three months, which is about the same time period. My MCL was, again, eight weeks. And actually, it looked the same, except for, they didn't, except for they didn't give me a wheelchair. They just gave me a pair of crutches. I don't know if that would do if it's a broken tibia. That, that's going to heal up what, before the ligament will. And when the tibia breaks, if it's going to be that quick of a recovery, that sounds more like a green stick fracture or like a shin splint versus like snap. Because the snap is bad. That's what happened to Sid. This was nowhere near as bad as Sid's. So she's probably out again six to eight weeks. That makes sense. For my MCL, it was one week in a knee immobilizer, seven weeks in a planar knee brace without surgery. And I think the knee mobilizer, I think my knee immobilizer looked more, more beefy than the one she wore. And my knee brace went like literally from my, my ankle to my hip. It really like literally ke keeps your knee in one plane of motion. So it can literally, so your knee can literally only go like, up or down. It's just awkward to wear. You have to wear it over your pants because it's, it's bulky, it's metal. I am Robocop. It's like ver early versions of robot stuff. So, but Britt Baker's not. And she tried to curse. No. 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 Tony should just like dump prod of her wheelchair and Rebel should just like push her, give, give, give her a good shove down a ramp somewhere. That's all I can say is it's, it's heat, but it, it's, it's like go away heat. Uh, then the inner circle are there and they're going to cut their promo. They're going to have their pep rally and, and they just see like orange Cassidy wandering around. They're like, go get them. Whatever. And then our next match, this was weird because AEW had a lot more talking segments than they normally do. And the matches weren't necessarily that long. Like the Brian Cage match lasted three to five minutes of that. This next match was a little bit longer. It was uh, Chrissy James from Brazil. You can always tell because of the color scheme and the booty. They got Hikaru Shida who came out as Tifa Lockhart. Yeah, I'll clap that, I guess. Um, they start off, they try to have a dance off. Ha ha! But the heel Brazilian just kicks Sheet in like the, the calf. Again, this was a weird match. Um, Chrissy James had tried a flippy Mexican arm drag thing. Then they got into a hair pulling contest. She had just delivered a whole bunch of knees and a Falcon's arrow. I don't think Chrissy James has been around long. Um,. Hikaru Shida kind of just like sold what she could. Again, her looking like Tifa Lockhart. You know, after winning that women's belt, this should have been well, like a squash match. Chrissy Jane should have like, they should have gotten a lockup hair pulling contest. Chrissy Jane should have slapped Hikaru Shida once. That should have been her offense. Hikaru Shida just then destroys Chrissy James, lifts a belt in one hand, the kendo stick in the other hand. Look like Tifa, Lock Tifa Lockhart and, and leave. Um, but this makes the women's division that, like, they've been doing so good. This set it back back to being a, a poopy division. Uh, this match itself it wasn't terrible. It was a can of soup. I think it's been a long time 
and many women's matches since I gave the kin a super rating out on AEW. Then there was a Kenny Page and uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page. They looked like they were hanging out in a hotel room drinking. And like they just realized like they were being filmed. Like it was like a camera up there and like I don't know. Like there's like a camera in those flowers up there on that corner. Cause they would stare at it and they'd be like, huh? Because Hangman Page went up to me, huh? Yeah, what's this? And then they started to sing, but they had no audio. Uh, Kenny was drink. Uh, Kenny Omega was drinking his milk. He could barely pour the milk. Hangman and Page just has a has a couple of beers. Hangman and Page, it's pretty cool. Uh, eventually, they're going to drop those belts though, uh, and we'll see to who later. Well, probably for probably at Fighter Fest, whenever that is. Then we had a Cody promo. Um, the AEW TNT Championship belt. When I first saw it, it looked like a toy belt. It did not look any better this time. I think this belt is getting worse reviews from, from the fans than the original showing of the Universal Champion and the 24-7 belt. At least the 24-7 belt, you understand what it's about. The TNT belt literally looks like it's like someone just like put it TN, like painted TNT onto a silver plate and cut things out. I think the way they're going to make it is they're going to make it like the old school belts used to. Where on the side place, they're going to put like the names of the people that win it. But, like, it'll be, like, Cody Rhodes is obviously going to be the first name. Then it's going to be whoever. And there's going to be so many plates. And it puts, like, the name plate on, on the front of the belt. So, it'll, again, it'll say, say Cody Rhodes in the front. And there'll be the whole list of champions that hold it along the side. So, it'll, it'll be a, I don't know. I just want to see the finished product. If it's not finished, you know what? You don't need to do anything. But that's a whole other issue. And then we had Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc taking on SCU. Because Jacksonville is obviously not the worst city ever because SCU seems to be there a lot. And they're from the west west side. Well, they don't want to be from the west side of Jacksonville. That's, that's bad. But they're from the west coast. So uh, Kip and Jimmy Havoc, they actually just jumped SCU to begin with. That was pretty cool. Um, Scorpius guy hit that. But he had an amazing backbreaker. That was a huge, that was a big bump that Kip Sabian took. SCU did a lot of tandem and double team. Again, I love when they do the old-fashioned tag out, arm ringer, double axe handle blows to the exposed arm. That's still the best. Uh, Kip and Havoc, there are no sloshes at doing the, the tandem work either. And there was a cat, the catapult eye poke. That's good. I like that. Uh, obviously, they do the heel cheating. Kip Sabian would distract the referee. Jimmy Havoc's on the corner. He would choke him. Penelope Ford did not get involved in this match. That's that's weird. Um, and then there was the Scorpius guy put on the Dragon Sleeper. Jimmy Havoc nailed, nailed him to get him out of it. And then... I forget what the finish was, but I know Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc beat SEU. I was surprised. It was a fun enough match. A good solid cheeseburger match. So I think the thing is, Kip Sabian and Jimmy Havoc are going to face Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page next week. And then eventually at some pay-per-view, whoever the champ, oh, Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page, are going to have to face, and I would think drop the belts to best friends, I think. I think that's the way they're doing it. I know, again, they say, well, in the summertime when we have Fighter Fest, it's like, summertime, it's... Already summer here in Florida. Summer in Florida, folks. Lasts from May 
June, July, August, September, and the half of October. Summer in Florida lasts six months. Falls, like October, November, December, January. Fall is four months. So that's 10 months. Yeah, that's about right. February is winter. And then, yeah, yeah. So say it's, let's say it's um, May, June, July, August, September, five months. So summer is five months long. Then you have October, November, December, January. That's four. That's fall. So that's nine. February is winter time. March and April springtime. So yeah, so that makes sense. So yeah, so it's just like like summer half of the year out here. And spring's done and over with already. Fall doesn't start till like mid October after hurricane season. Or actually in the middle of hurricane season. Because yeah, hurricane season starts up four more days. Wow, that sucks. Then there's that little MJF thing. That was pretty cool. And then we get to our Battle Royal. And wow, this show's almost over. So the Battle Royal, in it includes War and this is for a future shot. Or the winner of this gets a shot next week for Cody's TNT Championship belt. Because Cody's going to be Cody's going to be a busy man. He's going to be defending this every week. I, I, I think he lives somewhere in Georgia. I got a few lives in, around, around like St. Simon Island. That's not that far of a drive. That's not too bad. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think if as long as he lives in like southern Georgia, it's not that bad. Of, I mean, it's only like an hour drive. It's not like he's doing anything else. But, well, well, besides being with Brandy, but that's a whole other issue. So, but in this Battle Royal match, we have Wardlow, MJF, Luther, who I haven't seen since he came out with the Nightmare Family. Peter Avalon was there, the librarian. I didn't even know he was still around. Christopher Daniels, Luchasaurus, Marco Stunt, Jungle Boy, Sonny Kiss was there, Colt Cabana. How can you have a Battle Royal without Colt Cabana? Billy Gunn. Orange and Orange Cassidy. 12-man Battle Royal. Uh, starts off, Orange Cassidy gets jumped by Santana Ortiz because they dared, they dared came into that picture. And again, it was just, they had like some weird technical issues too. Like, they say, oh, we're going to go to break. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp. I don't know. They just had some technical issues going on. Again, it, it kind of took away from the show. Again, Raw felt like the main show. This honestly felt like a lower rung of wrestling, wrestling show well beneath WWE. For, for a while, they was kind of equal. Like AEW would edge him out, but now, uh, now that Vince has figured out you need people there, maybe that was the whole thing. Once you get people there, it feels good. Feel good. Feels good. Feel good ink by the girls. For some reason, I've had a, I've had a couple of their songs in my head recently. It's weird. Um. So again, there was some good action. Orange Cassidy getting a get get jumped by. Uh, again, Ortiz, uh, MJF, it's kind of hangs on the corner. Uh, Wardlow's a shield. Colt tried to get the elbows in. Colt, and it was, it was, it was just, a, just a total schmoz like every battle royal is. Uh, just like JR says, yeah, it's ugly like a pair of bowling shoes. I've seen some pretty spiffy bowling shoes, though. 
Uh, the order of eliminations. Luther was first to be eliminated. Then Sonny Kiss was eliminated. Then Cole Cabana, Peter Avalon, and Brandon Cutler. Brandon Cutler was there too. I forgot to add him. That's okay. No, no one really cared. <laughs> no one knew that he was going to win anyway. So Cutler was there. Avalon and Cutler kind of eliminated each other. I'll get to that bit. Christopher Daniels was then eliminated next. Uh, Marco Stunt followed them. And then Billy Gunn, Luchasaurus, MJF, Wardlow. And the final two were Jungle Boy and Orange Cassidy. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. Uh, Cole Cabana, when he got eliminated, he got an invitation by the Dark Order. Could we see Dark Cabana? Indeed. Uh, the way Avalon and Color got eliminated is that they were got, they both got caught straddling the top rope and just like decided to punch each other while on said top rope. They got to the apron and then they just kind of started to choke each other, slap each other's hands off, and they both go falling off. They eliminate each other. Uh, Jungle Boy looked yeah, the famous sir. Warlow just tossed. And I mean, just like literally picked up and threw Marco Stunt out of the ring. Like, that's just. Wow. That looks strong. And Marco Stunt landed so awkwardly. He just gets tossed around. Jim Ross is. Uh, uh, Jim Cornette's right. He's like, like a 15 year old high school kid. Skinny little nerd. Um, who else? Then there was, oh, for a while, you know, Warlow tossed him out. Then it was a Haas on Haas action. We had Luchasaurus on Warlow. That was pretty cool. Then we had Billy Gunn. He bumped into Luchasaurus by accident. Two of them face off. That was really fun to see. MJF hit the cross chops on Billy Gunn. And then he told him, then, then MJF said, you know what, Billy Gunn? You can suck it. So that was pretty cool. Um, Orange Cat and, and somehow then it was weird because MJF and, War, and Wardlow, MJF pulled out the ring. He nailed Wardlow by accident. Um, Jungle Boy and Orange Cassie somehow let me both of them because MJF was in shock. He got sent over the top rope. And it was Orange Cassidy and Jungle Boy. Um, Orange Cassidy, he has now Superman elbows. Yeah. I'm not a big Orange Cassidy fan. I don't know. He's he's waning on me. But eventually Jungle Boy tossed Orange Cassidy out. Jungle Boy is pretty good. I can see him giving Cody a really good match. Or maybe even time limit draw. Indeed. So it's a battle royal. There was some good spots. I think the bad outweighed it. For a battle royal, it was a ham sandwich. And last thing, we have the inner circle pep rally, and Vicky Guerrero comes out. Attention, please! Attention, please! And she, and oh wow, she she looked like that like mom cheerleader. She had on yoga pants and and like a a, a, a tightish looking top. Vicky Guerrero, ugh, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. She was great. She was way too loud. Uh, Chris Jericho probably invited her personally. She's He just said, do whatever you feel like doing. Uh, Vicky Guerrero was great. They did a t-shirt toss of Inner Circle Champions. Yep, those shirts. I'll tell you what, I would take that as I would take that shirt as a gym shirt. I don't mind that. Uh Chemi Covera was giving out participation trophies. Oh god. I remember the last participation trophy I got, I think, was for soccer. And I'm trying to think. I think it was like sixth grade. When I played soccer last, and like we got participation trophies, and I remember, I, I I swear I can remember just staring at the trophy. I said this is garbage. Oh no, what was it? Baseball. One year I know I did good in baseball, and then it went straight downhill from there. It might have been baseball. 
Might have been ba it was either baseball in fifth grade or soccer in sixth grade. Where I, did I get a trophy for participation in soccer? No, it was it was baseball. It was my second baseball trophy. And I looked at it and I just remember staring, I'm like, I suck at baseball. I think all I think one year I hit a double. That was like the highlight of my career. And like that second time I played little league, I know my dad hated baseball. He had like even worse memories of baseball than I did. I will give this. Th th thank you, Dad. Like I think the thing I remember most about enjoying baseball is that you used to take me out for pizza and pinball games afterwards. Thank you, Dad. I know in this time without sports. Everyone has that one sports moment, and I just remember baseball was fun because I know my dad, he was always there. He, well, my dad was always there for me, and he would then take me out to pizza and a pinball game after after baseball. And, and that's why I have fond memories of baseball, I guess. It's stupid, but you need something in, in this, these trying times, I guess. But to go back to wrestling, though. Um, then Jake Hagar, he wrote, wrote a poem that was pretty funny. And then Jericho goes back on Monday night when Tyson double-crossed him because Jericho is wrong. That was awesome. I love the fact that they have this, this 10-year, Jericho has this 10-year booking plan. That was great. Uh, then Tyson Goon comes out, or, or Tyson and his gang of people come out. Tyson Goon. They just start a brawl because I guess he's the one that drank all the bubbly. Tyson drink the bubbly, 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 and ate the cheese and pepperoni platter. Um, or maybe his goons did. And Tyson goon. Then it was a brawl. So eventually we'll see Tyson and Jericho probably face off. Probably Fighter Fest too. And and that was okay. Um. I'll tell you what. I don't think I've ever said this about AEW. But there was no surf and surf matches. This was really a ham sandwich of a show. And I don't know if it's because they're coming off a of pay-per-view. But yeah. So that was a cheeseburger. Soup. Ham sandwich. Yeah, it was a ham sandwich of a show. Cheeseburger. Ham sandwich. Wow. And that was it for AEW. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please continue your support. I do appreciate it. Again, if you support me, I send, out, send you out a little video. Thank you. Um, there's only one more show to do this week. Yay. Um, that's going to be Friday. Friday, I review SmackDown. Because I'm off tomorrow. I don't know. I'll hold off. I think and give you my full comments a week where I'm not beating myself up. Or I might make it like Saturday after drinking a little too much of the bubbly. Well, not bubbly, but adult beverages. And, oh no, I have to do that that night too. Oh, that's a weird science night too. I don't know. I will make a comprehensive review of the Dark Side of the Ring stuff because those were actually really good. They have season three coming out. And I'm trying to think. I think that's it. So have a good night, everyone. I'll see everyone on Friday. Bye.